Where am I? Is this a dream? Not quite, Murphy. Then you're the... the big P.I. in the sky? That's right, Murphy. But now is not the time for you to be here. There is a vast and malignant evil at work on the Earth, and fate, for some reason that even I cannot fathom, has chosen you to oppose it. But why me? I'm no more thrilled about it than you are. Nevertheless, your fate has been decided. My name's Tex Murphy. I'm a small-time private investigator in the big city of New San Francisco. But my office isn't in the glamour districts. It's in the run-down, mutant part of the city, close to Coit Tower. A place they've been refurbishing for years, but it never seems to improve. Not exactly great for business, but it holds a strange attraction for me. I've cracked some pretty big cases over the years. You may even have heard of me. But I don't do much investigating anymore. These days, I'm known for being a man who gets things done, no matter what the cost. You got a job that pays? I'll do it, no questions asked. I can't really remember why I became a PI. Maybe I was drawn to the romance, adventure, and independence it offered. Or maybe because I believed in its code of honor, that a man can remain untarnished as others sink into a cesspool of lies, corruption, and greed man better than the world around him. Even a set of principles can slowly slip from your grasp. The world has a way of beating you into submission. Circumstances change. The guilty aren't always punished. Temptations become obsessions, and love can be violently taken, leaving it empty and hollow. Each day, innocence fades, and your character weakens. And that's not all at once, but a piece at a time until you can't be put back together again. 
you finally realize the only way to get ahead in this world is to make sure you're on the winning side and then do anything you can to stay alive. I don't know why I'm so reflective tonight. Maybe I finally crossed the Rubicon, but that's not true either. I passed that sign miles back and didn't even pause to take a picture. Maybe I just feel extra guilty tonight for what I'm about to do. There was a time when I would have never agreed to do something this despicable. I can't explain why I do this, but maybe Judas would understand. I think we got him. Let's get out of here. Hey, you! Over here! <sighs> Finally! What was all that commotion outside, anyway? Wowza! You really got a hit on the head. Remember me? Your old pal, Huck? Seriously, you look clueless. Uh, who or what are you? Geez, how hard did you hit your head? Well, let me reintroduce myself. I'm your smart Alex, your personal assistant, version 1.5, fashioned three years ago in a factory with truly horrible working conditions <laughs> you don't want to know. I'm your trusty tech-savvy sidekick, and I'm also a confidant and a best buddy, you gigantic oaf. Remember? Well, hello, stranger. Is Louie here? He's in the back, getting ready to open. You're up awfully early. Want some coffee? Sure. I like it like my heart. Black? Oh, man. You ruined my joke. Is that blood? Ow! <gasps> oh, hush. Ah. You've been out picking fights again? Uh, I don't know what happened, but... You'd look pretty incredible in a nurse's outfit. Mm, you do, huh? You in the mood for a little role-playing? Who do you think you are? Mr. Tall, blonde, and bloodied. Ah, oh, geez, I'm late. I got a new extension at work. I'll send it to your smart Alex. Please, go see Dr. Donahue at the North Hill Clinic. Call me after and tell me what she says about that noggin of yours. See you, Uncle Louie. Uh, see you, Taylor. Ah, Mr. Murphy, what are you doing here? Why are you acting mad at me? You know why. You drunk again? I told you, you ain't allowed in here, you've been drinking. I am stone cold sober. What happened to your head? I don't know. I woke up on the fire escape. I go into my apartment and everything is different. The street, Chelsea's newsstand, you, everything is completely different. I mean, I don't know whether I'm tripping here or having a bad dream or something. What's the last thing you remember uh, before you woke up? Uh, I don't know, but something with Chelsea. Chelsea? What day do you think it is? No, hold on. What year do you think it is? <sighs> what year? Are you serious? 
It's 2043. Oh, jeez. Look at that calendar. Over there? On the fridge? 2050? What the hell's going on here? Last night, Chelsea and I went to the Golden Pagoda. Oh, no! What? It's me. Look, somebody has stolen our car. Who's your mate? Oh, that's Tex. He's having a very bad day. That true, Tex? Oh, no. Everything's just going peachy. Well, things could get worse, huh? He shot me. He, he shot both of us. He shot me. There's nothing. Why isn't there anything? That's what I'm trying to tell you, Mike. It wasn't last night. It was seven years ago. What the hell is that? Welcome. Welcome to the Golden Gate Hotel. How can I help you? Mr. Murphy? Did you know Ardo, the guy who worked here before? Ardo Newpop, California State Senator. Ran on a fire safety platform. Well, it's sure a lot nicer than when Ardo was here. Call me Tex, by the way. No, thank you. The last time I tried that, you were all... I'm a professional, and should be treated as such. Or some sort of righteous baloney like that. <coughs> Management heard about it, and I didn't get any time off for a month. So, you got a name? You know very well who I am. Holly Graham, cute, right? Ah. Oh. Ah. No. Don't, don't shoot. Dead? Well, I think you missed a hell of a party. Party? Yeah, you're here in time for the laser show. I wouldn't do that. <sighs> I was here to meet Carlos Maldonado. Is that you? Or him? I think I set off an alarm when I came in here. I don't usually do this kind of thing. I was just trying to help Mason. He said, come in here, find the PI, get the cryo chamber, and keep it safe. Hey, 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 I, I found that first. <laughs> Slow learner, you have to find Mason. I think he's in big trouble with bad people. I don't know why. He's a neurologist, for God's sake. But you have to promise me that if I let you go, you won't come after me, you'll find Mason. Oh, I promise. My fingers are so frozen, I can't cross them. If your memory problems are part of all this, Mason is the only one who can help you. So you need to find him and bring him back safe just as much as I do. I'll be in contact soon. Hello, boys. Well, if it isn't Tex Murphy, what were you doing in there? Well, it's a little hard to exp... 
Oh, you know the drill. I was really trying to get my hands on that surveillance equipment. Maybe I could see exactly what happened to me. Now the only way I'll find it is if New San Francisco's Finest decides to play ball with me. I don't know where they'd start now, but I'd better polish up on the old Murphy charm. Whether you're a mutant or a norm, San Francisco's our home. Be a part of the solution to crime. If you see something suspicious, please report it to the SFPD immediately. Didn't take you long to get in trouble, did it? You here to turn yourself in? Well, first of all, no. And second of all, Danwich, you know me. You didn't have to send your goons down to get me. If you wanted me to come down, just ask me. I was just reviewing your file when you came in. Is that a lot? Because it looks like a lot. August, 2047. Beak Nariz, NSFPD informant. Beaten and hospitalized after providing information about Tex Murphy. Nariz refuses to identify his assailant. No charges ever filed. November 2048. Surveillance video shows suspected extortionist Jen Lee leaving the Golden Pagoda with Tex Murphy, never to be seen again. The case remains unsolved. Shall I go on? In the past few years, you've gained quite a reputation for yourself. You've got New San Francisco's criminal underbelly running scared. You're a cop. Is, isn't that the way you like your criminal underbellies? If you didn't kill Maldonado, what were you doing there? I wanted to find out whether he caught me scrapbooking. If that gets out, I'm through in this town. Murphy! Here, let me look at you. Louie told me something terrible has happened. I've been worried sick. Yeah. According to Louie, I've turned into a real bastard over the last seven years. Oh, Lord. Please don't tell me that lump on your head has turned you back into the uh, pathetic, pestering P.I. I used to know. Hold on. Are you telling me the text I turned into was not pathetic and pestering? Those are my secret weapons. I'll grant you have some detective skills, but it was all relentless, annoying banter and endless questions to me. I mean, imagine my surprise when, over the past few years, you turned into someone I could actually tolerate. What kind of a jackass did I turn into? If I'd asked you that two days ago, you would have punched me in the face. Maybe I should punch you now. Might jog both our memories. Ah, Mr. Murphy, will you be needing some housekeeping done? So, last time I saw you, Clint, uh, it seemed like you were pretty loco for the cocoa. <laughs> yeah, that chocolate stand was a bad idea. But it's all good now. I actually own this place. Well, you've come a long way, Clint. From living in a dumpster to owning your own dump. Okay, I don't want any trouble. Well, fine. Uh, how much money do I owe you this time? Why do you keep hassling me about that? That was years ago. I paid back all those interest charges. Plus interest. Remind me, how did I get you to do that? Everyone knows what happens to people who get on your bad side. Only one reason you ever come in here, and it ain't to buy anything. You know all our stuff is junk. Is that the new electronic shop slogan? I mean, it's no wonder you're not getting any new business. Why are you busting my chops? You know what kind of business we're running here. Are you saying this is some sort of front for organized crime? Because that sounds illegal. Look, the guys upstairs don't want any trouble either. They said you can have whatever you want at cost. Oh, <laughs> no. I am not falling for that one again. I'm just here to find out about that dead guy upstairs and what he was up to. Look, I know how much you hated Maldonado, and I probably shouldn't have let him use the second floor. But he was paying cash, and he kept a low profile. So I thought it was all good. I didn't know what he was doing up there, and I didn't want to know. Well, this is a nice surprise. Wow, is that a uh, home gym? So, what brings New San Francisco's sexiest PI to my door? Business or pleasure? Let's start with business. How disappointing. Well, we could use that home gym in there to work off some stress. I'm sure you wouldn't mind a happy ending, if you know what I mean. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's that's all anybody wants, right? I mean, and they lived happily ever after, that kind of thing. 
<sighs> Fine. You don't want to scratch each other's backs. But what if I don't play ball? Can we still rough and tumble? Well, Sapphire, don't make me twist your arm. Oh. <laughs> you can't make me talk. <laughs> we can do this the hard way or the easy way. Excuse me? Are you threatening me? Because if you are, I'd love to see you try the hard way. I'm sorry, Tex. I got carried away. I didn't mean to hurt you. At least not like that. Oh, you're not getting off that easy. It's gonna cost you a few minutes of tedious questioning, and then maybe dinner and a movie at a much, much later time. Tex? Hello? Could I speak to Carlos? Tex? Sorry, have we met? <laughs> Hill Clinic. Well, I better step on it. You look like you're in pretty bad shape. Your eyes are really bloodshot. Yeah, you should see him from this side. The head wound is painful for sure. Maybe this Dr. Donahue can help me sort things out. stops moving. A minute ago, it was like Fantasia in here. I'm just gonna assume you've got some head trauma. Let's see what's going on. Weird question for you. Is there any way to tell whether I'm dreaming or not? Ah. Yep, you're <sighs> awake. So tell me what happened. I woke up a few hours ago with this goose egg on my head and an injection mark on my arm. I've got no idea how I got them. As a matter of fact, I have no idea about anything over the past seven years. Hmm. You took a pretty good shot to the head. Enough to knock you out. You caused some short-term memory loss, but for seven years. Hoping to find more information about why sleazy P.I. Carlos Maldonado has been keeping an eye on my place leads me to a swanky beach house where I'm delighted and surprised to meet an incredibly beautiful woman inside a home medical office. Unfortunately for me, the feeling is not mutual, and she's accompanied by a very lethal friend. Freeze. What are you doing here? Well, we had such a charming conversation on the vid phone, I knew I had to meet you. Now I'm rethinking that. You don't remember me, do you? Well, I wish I did. Does that count? We met just once, years ago. So did you really come here looking for me? Or are you here for Mason? I'm sorry, the correct answer is C, all of the above. I came here to find you, but it's Mason I'm looking for. Well, you'll have to make do with me. Mason isn't here. So how do you know Mason? In the biblical sense, I'm his wife, Ariel. Ariel Bowers. When was the last time you saw him? Over a month ago. <laughs> no kidding. A wife like you, I'm surprised he ever leaves the house. We've been legally separated for over a month. He has issues, erratic behavior, periods of deep depression. It got to be too much. Psychological problems, huh? What are we talking here? He ties his shoe for an hour or he walks into Burger Barn with dynamite in his pants? I think it was just a reaction to stress. 
His work kept him away for weeks at a time. So I heard your husband was a neurologist, like a brain surgeon or something. Or something, yes. He worked in neurochemistry, how chemicals influence neural operations. So who's he working for now? Mason never talked about his work, even before we separated. But we stayed in touch. This was the longest he ever went without calling me. I got worried and came here. I found Maldonado's number and called to see if he knew anything. Yeah, well, Maldonado's not going to be able to help us much because he's dead. Is that who you were coming to see on Chandler Avenue? Yes, that's right. What happened to him? Well, I'm not sure, but I'm trying to find out. But the trail seems to lead through your husband, who, by the way, I believe has been abducted. Long-lasting memories are created through a process of consolidation, which is based on the formations of protein in the brain. Thus, memories, particularly painful ones, are formed by these unstable proteins, making them easily identifiable and removed with a combination of drugs and behavior therapy, ensuring memory elimination. Of course, there are those who do not believe that the benefits of memory modification outweigh the risks. They warn that eliminating memories, one could significantly alter a person's personality, their history. Hey, smoke no more cigarettes. I hear they have a smoking deterrent system built right into the cigarette. Hey, buddy, do you know a thousand people stop smoking every day by dying, you moron? Kissing you would be like licking an ashtray. Get it, dumbass? Hey, did you know that you and I are similar? We both are certified butthead. No, 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 don't kill me. I have mercy. Well, the system's about as effective as other systems I've tried. But I'll keep these in case I have a smoking emergency. Oh, Lord, we beseech thee. Give us strength. Courage. Protection. Hail, fellow countrymen. We are ready to begin our quest. Hunting the dreadful night beast. Make haste. Sorry, Tex, we gotta run. Farewell, Sir Larry Curley and Mo. I'll be sure to tell Snow White you're gonna be late for breakfast. I'm talking about my barbecue. Welcome to Inspector Burns Barbecue. My name is Mojo. Special of the day is Soy Con Carnage. They'll destroy your hunger as well as your taste buds. Order when you're ready. Well, those three little barbecued pigs look good. I could really wolf those down. Hey, hey, you're, you're Tex Murphy. And you're Mojo. My real name is Mordecai Josephus. Are you serious? Well, that's my real name, too. No way. Yeah, well, it's pretty close. Uh, it's actually Tiberius, uh, James Tiberius. And my mom, she starts calling me Tibby. And, well, I had to come up with something that I could live with. The ultimate Tex Murphy trivia. You just made my day. Look, Mr. Murphy, you fancy yourself a sort of a timeless classic, a PI archetype for the ages. You know your way around the crime scene, but it's no secret that you're not so good at high-tech gadgets. Well, now that you mention it, there might be something you can help me with. We may only get one chance, Carlos, so I wanted to go over the plan one more time. If Margaret shows up at the Ritz, call me immediately. If I'm delayed, detain her. We have to assume she won't give up the egg voluntarily, but I want to talk to her first. You know why I've given you the cryo chamber, but that has to be the very last resort. And if anything happens to me, I'll need you to contact a friend of mine. Keep it safe until I retrieve it. Well, it sounds like Mason and Margaret had a major disagreement. I need to locate both of them and get to the bottom of this. Hey, cowboy. Any memories coming back yet? Not so far, but something tells me I might be missing out on some really good ones. That's solid detective work. So... Were we dating? Dating? Oh, that's so cute. I guess you can call it that. But we were also 
Working together in a more professional capacity. Well, now my detective skills are picking up a little sarcasm. Uh, seriously, cowboy. You're good. I've learned a lot working with you the past couple weeks. Hmm? Let me get this straight. Uh, you and I were working on a case together. Do you mind telling me about that? Not at all. You wanted a list of tenants here at the Ritz as far back as I could go. Why would I do that? It was your dreams. They were vivid before, but they were getting out of control. It's almost like they were changing you into someone else. You talked about seeing things from the past, but you wouldn't give me details. You were incredibly stressed. It was like you actually believed this apartment was haunted. You even started looking into psychometry. Psycho what? Psychometry. It's the belief that an object can contain a person's energy or memories. Hey, Murphy, how you doing? You, you okay? I, I heard you were having some kind of amnesia. You, you know, most alien abductees always have some sort of memory loss. <laughs> Last I saw you, you were on some tropical island hiding out from the NSA. Okay, like I told you before, I wasn't hiding. I was relaxed. Oh, and of course, you don't even remember talking to me, do you? So, did I happen to tell you anything about the case I'm working on? Not yet, but you know I'm always ready to be Robin to your Batman. <laughs> Uh, without the homoerotic undertones, of course. Sorry, Arch, but it's a package deal. If you're gonna be in this with me, you're gonna have to be in all the way. <laughs> you, you, you had me going there, Murph. <laughs> okay, Boy Wonder, I need you to enter two names into the Bat computer. Mason Bowers, Margaret Leonard. Margaret Leonard? She's connected to one of the greatest mysteries of all time. I mean, you know who uh, Nikola Tesla was, right? Nikola Tesla was a genius. Probably one of the greatest geniuses ever. He invented a, a Tesla coil, the AC electricity, remote control. He even pioneered cryogenics. So are we almost to the part about Margaret Leonard? Right. <laughs> Well, uh, Tesla died in 1943 when the FBI uh, just swooped in and confiscated all his papers and designs. Then in about 2012, all this stuff, the, the Tesla cash just disappeared. <laughs> and you want to know who the number one suspect was? Margaret Leonard. No, an FBI agent named Charles Johansson. Now, I know they could never prove that he did it, but then he quits the FBI and joins some Tesla fanatic group called the Tesla Legacy Society, a group dedicated to making the world better through technology. And that's where he meets... Margaret Leonard. Bingo! They fall in love, they get married. I think they even had a kid together. So where's Margaret now? Uh, not a clue. Johansson uh, died a couple years later, cancer, I think. After that, Margaret just dropped out of circulation. So all this happened, what, 30, 37 years ago? I mean, no one's found the Tesla cash since then? It's one of the great mysteries, the lost inventions of Nikola Tesla. What's the big deal with the Tesla inventions? I mean, there must be some reason they were never made. Oh. You ever hear of a little thing called Tunguska? <sighs> Have I ever. Picked up a bad case when I was down in Mexico. It's where I learned the phrase, Baños, rapidos, andale muchachos, vamonos. Oh, oh, Murph, you're too funny. You know, in 1890s, Tesla conducted an experiment and created a resonance frequency. You know, like a big vibration, and it nearly took out a whole chunk of New York City. And then in the 1900s, he began to work on what he called a teleforce beam. The, the, the press called it, you know, a death ray, you know, cooler name. But a few years later in Russia, remote area called Tunguska, something caused an explosion a thousand times greater than the atomic bomb. 
A thousand times greater than the atomic bomb 40 years before we invented it? But that was the last anyone ever heard of the death ray. Tesla never got funding. Instead, they made him out to be some crackpot, and he was broke for the rest of his life. Some people think the plans for it were part of the Tesla cash. Just think how much someone would pay to get their hands on that. Why do so many people around you end up dead? Same as you. Just comes with a job. Did you kill Margaret Leonard? If I killed her, what'd I do with her head? Eat it? But we keep walking in on you with all these dead bodies. Whoever off Margaret Leonard either hated her guts or was completely bonkers. I mean, why would someone decapitate her? I don't care why. I just want to know who. Wait a second. How do we even know it's Margaret Leonard? I mean, maybe that's why they took the head. Yeah, that might have worked a hundred years ago, but now we've got apps for that. We've already got a positive ID. It's kind of fun, isn't it? I mean, kind of working together, uh, bouncing ideas, sharing information. I mean, what if I said I had some information that might help your investigation? I'd say you were withholding evidence. No, I said I might have something. No, you said you had something that might help. Yeah, oops. Look, Dan, would you seem like a stand-up guy, and I know you don't want any vigilantism, so I'll play it by the book. I think I have video that might have been shot by the guy who killed Margaret Leonard. I'm just gonna hand it to you and hope you'll cut me some slack. It's on your smart, Alex. Let's have it. The guy in the video is Mason Bowers. And this is the guy you think was abducted. The problem is there's no evidence of anyone being abducted, so I can't investigate. My hands are tied. Well, mine, as you see, are not. One hears a great deal about Tex Murphy on Chandler Avenue. To what do I owe this pleasure? You mind if I ask what your interest is in Tesla? I believe some of the items Rook has were part of the Tesla cash but he refuses to divulge how he obtained them. I presume from Margaret Leonard, or some third party who got them from her. Oh, it's shocking. Rook normally would cut off his right arm if he thought somebody'd buy it. Do you know the name J.T. Donnelly? Yeah. I mean, I just heard about it, but he was a P.I., and he lived around here back in the 1940s. At the Ritz, in the very room in which you now live. An intriguing connection. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting and uh, maybe a little weird, but it's it's not a connection. <laughs> but it's so much more than that. Back in Donnelly's time, there was a man known as the Sleeping Prophet, Edgar Casey. He made a compelling case for the belief that most of us have lived past lives. <laughs> You're losing me. Come now. You've said on more than one occasion that you felt as if you'd been born a century too late. A man out of time, as it were. Tell me, do you have disturbingly realistic, vivid dreams of another era? What? You know about my dreams? I must be getting incredibly broad-minded in my old age. So what are you saying? Ah, I was J.T. Donnelly in a former life. Ditch me like that again, you might end up dead. So now you threaten me, Mr. Donnelly. Make up your mind. Are you here to protect me or kill me? Just give us the girl. Take the 50 G's and head back to New York. Easy peasy. Yeah, leave the treasure of the Tsar to you upstanding citizens. Nice try. Yeah, just like Alibaba and the 40 Thieves, right? I didn't think you believed in fairy tales, Donnelly. You can pay me 50 grand for the girl, but if you want the egg, I already told you she doesn't have it. Still, 50 grand is 50 grand. Buy me why a Russian, let's talk further. We're about to be dry gold, so hurry it up, princess. Would you quit calling me that? I am going as fast as I can. We gotta get some distance between us and the Three Stooges. 
You don't even know where we are. We are in the middle of nowhere. Darling, that is the least of our problems. Now move! Hello, mate. Slade? How? What? Uh, weren't you in... Locked up in San Quentin till 2260? No, not me. Good behavior. Could we make this quick? I need to run home and change my underwear. So you don't remember everything after you and Chelsea got nicked? Our little partnership? Our partnership? Look, I know we just made up, but I think I'd rather lick toilets with my tongue than work with you. Ah, but you did, Tex. I did? Which one? Work with me. And it paid a lot better than licking dunnies. How do you think you made all that money? These past few years have been, shall we say, mutually beneficial. But now it seems the same old Tex, the Boy Scout, is back. That's a problem. You want to know what's wrong with the Boy Scouts? Not a darn thing. I check out Say San was smart, Alex, and find out it's some sort of doomsday cult recruiting candidates for a brave new world. And they believe this world will arrive soon. These boys take their schoolwork seriously. Welcome, friend. You are about to begin a journey to an incredible destiny. A successful candidate will become part of an elite aristocracy that will rule a universe beyond imagination. Bowers? Mason Bowers. Anybody home? Bowers? You don't remember anything, do you? But these people, they're trying to hurt you. I'm here to help you, okay? But to do that, I need your help. Look, have you got anything, anything at all that I can use? Anything in your pockets? Just, just this. Yeah, those are nice. I need them. Say, look, those are mine. Relax, stay here. Those are mine. Yeah, I'll be back, and you have a great those day. Those are mine, those are mine! Dave! 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 Come back here! What did you do? Yeah! Oh, my! Before I return to say San, I'll need a laser blade to cut Bowers free, the trance interrupter serum, and his trance key. Man, this is a nightmare. I fly back to the beach house to see if the cards Mason had on him can be used here. When I arrive, there's a familiar face waiting at the door, looking for an update. He's been shot up by something called the trance inducer. And if we don't get Mason's memory back, all three of us may be stuck at this dead end. I'm so grateful you're doing this. I don't know who else I could turn to. I still care for Mason, but we haven't been close in a long time. You seem so tough and self-reliant. Well, being a PI is a very rough business. I'll leave you to it. Good luck, Tex. I've got to go. But you know how to get a hold of me if there's anything you need. Mason! How are you today? How's everything going here at the camp? Four clubs. Four clubs. That's it. Come on. Come on, come on. Tex? Good, you know me. Now start talking while I cut you free. Is that the trans interrupter? What have you done? Brought you back from zombie land. These guys wiped your memory. No, they didn't. I did. What? Why the hell would you do that? Oh, God. Now they can find out everything I know. Very good, Tex. You continually impress. The cryo chamber. It holds your answers. Don't let them find it. Welcome back, Tex. You certainly have a gift for making things interesting. Yeah, it's a gift that just keeps on giving. I assume you have no idea who we are. 
Let me just save some time here. I have no memory of you or anything else since this bastard here shot me and my girlfriend seven years ago. Yes. Margaret made sure of that, didn't she? Willing to die just to keep you out of the equation, undermining me at every turn, right up until the end. I need to know one thing. Did you kill Chelsea? You could say that. Don't move. It's a long story, Tex. Maybe some other time. This was all before I returned. I've never seen Chelsea. I haven't seen her either, as far as you know. So what was Chelsea's connection with Margaret Leonard? It doesn't matter now. Margaret's dead, just like the man I used to be. And you are? I am the translator. Is translating your profession or a hobby? It is my mission and my destiny. Well, I guess that makes a million and two questions that I have. Everything would be a lot easier if you just unlock my memory. I would if I could, Tex, believe me. Unfortunately, Margaret took your trance key to her grave. What? I'm supposed to believe that I'm on your guys' side for whatever's going on here? That's right. We're all in this together. We have work to do. You're free to go, Tex. These guys must be playing some kind of mind trick on me. This has got to be a setup of some kind. Tex, buddy, I'm afraid I haven't been totally straight with you. But over the last seven years, you have become a lying, womanizing, duplicitous, two-timing cutthroat who plays both sides against the middle for money and is partners with the gentleman who just left the room. I thought you could just walk away from the person you'd become, but I see that fate may have something else in mind. So... How goes the investigation? I don't suppose you have any news regarding that egg we talked about. Well, everybody's talking about the Tesla egg, but I think I've got a lead on it. Are you familiar with Paradise Lost? Isn't that one of those resorts for swingers? <laughs> Paradise Lost is a poem about the great divide in heaven when Lucifer was cast out. After his banishment, Lucifer swore revenge and created an army of his own. He and his followers waited in darkness for their chance to strike back at the god who cast them out. After a three-day battle against the faithful angels, the forces of evil were banished from heaven for all eternity. Well, I like it when the good guys win. Yes, but what if the war were not over? What if Lucifer had not been defeated, but lay in wait, preparing for his chance to overthrow heaven? Well, debating hypothetical fairy tales a little nerdy for me. Look at the world around you. Did heaven win the battle? Man has created hell on earth. And the longer man exists, the further he descends from the wisdom and discernment needed to overcome the darkness. At his core, he is a grasping, clawing, foolish creature, willing to commit any sin to appease his base and greedy nature. I thought I was jaded. You really think we're as bad as all that? There are still some who give me hope. You? I'm not sure about. Your role, whether for good or evil, has yet to be determined. He's not so bad. Does he have the egg? <laughs> no, my dear. Entirely the wrong egg. An interesting trinket, to be sure, but not the egg I'm searching for. Well, if it isn't Ariel Bowers. You know, I hope I pronounced that correctly, because Bowers doesn't have a wife. Great work, Detective. How long did that take to figure out? After visiting with St. Germain and the former Mrs. Bowers, I head to the resort to gather my thoughts. Inside, I find something completely unexpected. Well, well. If it isn't Dudley Do-Right. And if it isn't Natasha Vitale, you and Boris Barinov have certainly pulled a fast one on me. Saint Germain isn't part of this. He's a collector looking for the Fabergé egg. I'm an agent looking to infiltrate the translator. Yeah, and I'm an accountant. Right now, I'd just like to make up for earlier today. 
I have some food being delivered and some wine chilling. It's up to you, Tex. The only thing I'll promise is that I'm all yours tonight. Do you want me to stay? Perhaps. Perhaps. So full of possibilities. Is there a more intriguing or enticing word? Perhaps. Must be the food. Do you mind getting it while I change? Perhaps. Mm. Hey, cowboy. I was hoping I'd find you here. I can't really talk right now. I'm not interested in talking. <laughs> I'm thinking a massage, a can of Red Bolt, would get you back into fighting shape. I'm sure you can go at least a couple rounds. Okay. Uh, there's a woman in my bathroom. Oh. Why is there a woman in your bathroom? Ready to eat? Well, I guess you can ask her yourself. I'm famished. I'm so glad you two could finally meet. <laughs> and since we're all together, how about a big sleepover? Guess that was a bad idea. Incredibly bad idea. So have you heard any more about the Tesla cash or Margaret Leonard? I mean, if she can't fix it, how are you gonna get your memory back? It's not just my memory, it's my life I want back. The Morlock hunters told me they'd never seen so many Morlocks around Chandler Avenue. They said it was like something or someone was drawing them there. Quite a few of them have been showing up in one particular area outside the city. I got a location for you. So who is Margaret Leonard really? Is she a modern Dr. Mengele experimenting on damaged human beings for her own gratification? And why is she the critical key to my world over the last seven years? My head's still spinning when I spot the location 200 feet below me. I know what you're thinking, and that's not a good idea. Oh, it's C4 chewing gum. This stuff packs quite a wallop, but oh, it is grape. I love grape flavor. On second thought, I better find another use for this. I've assembled the spirit radio. Tonight will be my first attempt to contact my husband. The radio is working. I hear voices that are incoherent, uh, eerie, and uh, tantalizing. There must be some way to amplify the power. <sighs> my last attempt was a near disaster, similar to what happened to Tesla back in 1899. The frequency caused a vibration that increased until I, oh, I thought the house would split in two. I don't want to get my hopes too high, but I believe I've made contact. I brought the radio into the lab, and I swear that being close to Charles's cryo chamber has intensified the signal. I've recorded hours of the voice and had experts analyze the audio from every angle. We've deciphered three words. Void, return, immortal. Sorry. Sorry. I can't control it. Well, I hadn't even noticed because you hide it so well. <laughs> It just seems strange she took such a risk coming to see you so she could give you the injection. You know what I find strange? I saw a video of Margaret torturing you. She wasn't torturing me. She had been helping me for a very long time. But you're a Morlock. She made you this way. You can't blame her. I chose this path. I volunteered to take one of the greatest technological leaps of all time, crowd technology. I was one of the founding members of the Tesla Legacy Society. So how come the Tesla Society hasn't taken care of you guys? 
Certainly the burden shouldn't just fall on Margaret. The Tesla Lega Society and its creations are no more. So what happened? I mean, I know a little of your history since Charles Johansson joined you. He was our martyr. We carried his work to his foot of his holy cryo chamber. We knew that one day he would return to take us to this glorious future. And he did return. Yeah, he was now the translator. He believed he knew the will of Tesla. He was going to create a gateway, a celestial conduit between heaven and earth. He called it the immortal coil. Gotcha. He was determined to build it at any cost. And in the end, we banished him from the society. But he didn't stay banished. Months later, he returned with a small group of men led by the one known as Slade. They attacked the facility, sparing no one. I saw Slade himself put a gun to my wife's head while she begged for her life. And he pulled the trigger. <sighs> when it was over, they removed every trace of the Tesla Legacy Society. Its files, its equipment. There was only one thing left behind. And that was? The spirit radio frequencies. And these were important? It may be the only way to stop Charles from activating the immortal coil. Before I head off to the Tesla Legacy Society, I get a call from Thompson Ald inviting me over to his house. Sounds like he's ready to talk. Any luck locating the spirit radio? I've got some leads, but it all seems to tie to something called the immortal coil. I found something that you might find interesting. They did some experiments with interfacing brain circuitry. You might have been one of the first test subjects. But if you decide to use the spirit radio to try to get answers, you'll need help. Wait here. This is where I come in. How about we go get that cryo chamber with old Maggie's head in it? We can't let him have it. Oh, hold on, partner there. No need to get violent or anything. Let's just see if we can work this out, OK? I couldn't shake the look of fear I saw in all's eyes as he was lying in a pool of his own blood. Slate had blown a hole through the little man without even a second thought. Could I really have been partners with someone like that? Maybe I did change over the last seven years, but if I did, it has to be possible to change back. I need a weapon I can use against these psychopaths. I knew my only hope was somewhere at the Tesla Institute. Slade's trumped me at every corner, but the ace may be at Tesla. After Tesla, I headed straight back to the Swamp House to talk to Mantis. Now that I had the spirit radio frequencies, maybe he would disclose the location of the Tesla egg. I'm losing control! Here, take the instruction. Only one way to destroy the coil. Use the power against itself. You must take the egg there. One frequency market found this. You have to do it now. I'm losing control. <laughs> Spirit radio resonance will split the coil in pieces. Mantis, you gotta what? hold it together. I can't. You gotta tell me where the egg is. The egg is a coil tower. Coil tower. Just do me a favor. You tell Slade to meet you there. This is gonna pay for what he's done to me. I'm gonna kill him. Just have him meet me. Mantis gives me instructions and hands me a Geiger counter, which he says will help reveal the location of the egg at Coit Tower. Murphy. Ah. I lay in a semi-conscious state, hearing fragments of conversation between Dalton and some other guy. I'm transported to a location in New Mexico where underground nuclear testing experiments were carried out in the 1950s. I remember a map where all the Titan reactors around the world were linked together to one location, the launch pad of the Immortal Coil. Time to play up my last hand.
have to sneak up on people all the time. You see that rather large, old-fashioned looking piece of equipment? That was your home for a very long time. Well, it is smaller than my current apartment. Is it rent control? And you have the egg. Wonderful. I must confess, I'm surprised to see you. Dalton and Slade were convinced that you'd never bring the egg here voluntarily. I want my memory back. This is the only way. Still, unlike me, they knew you way back when, when they used words like idealist, naive. Dartboard, punching bag. Hmm. I've always been an idealist myself. But I find it's the pragmatists like Dalton and Slade who get things done. Without Dalton, I wouldn't be here. And Dalton wouldn't have had the opportunities he did if Slade hadn't helped him rise through the ranks of Gideon Enterprises. And Slade wouldn't be here if I hadn't returned the favor and got him out of prison. And yet it was the naive idealist who found the egg. There's so much more to you than that, Tex. Surely by now you know that you were J.T. Donnelly. Protector, hired gun and confidant of Nikola Tesla. I knew my birth certificate must have been off. You don't believe me. But how do you explain your visions of Donnelly's life? Well, I think it's the Tesla egg. Donnelly hid it in the wall of the apartment. I didn't even start having the dreams until I moved in. The spirit radio allows us to communicate with the dead, not the egg. The egg merely amplifies it. Yeah, well, I had a radio. I mean, there are other explanations, but I got to admit, they all sound insane to me. And yet you can't deny the visions. The egg may have had an effect on your subconscious, your your spiritual DNA. But you weren't receiving messages, you were remembering. Everything has led to this. A reunion of consciousness. But not just for you, for us all. This is what Tesla intended. His death ray, the spirit radio, the Tesla egg, all brought together to create a celestial conduit, the immortal coil, that will redeem and purify this depraved planet and create a literal heaven on earth. True immortality, timelessness. No sickness, death, or pain. All needs met and achieved through the genius of Tesla! Tex, if you would be so kind as to step out there and place the egg. Where's Slade?
Since you have come here seeking answers through the spirit radio, please do so. But you'll only have a few minutes. Then none of the answers will matter because the world will be reborn. Margaret. Margaret Leonard, can you hear me? It's so cold. Dark and so empty. Is, is there someone there? I, I, I feel the presence. It's me, Tex Murphy. I'm trying to contact you through the spirit radio. You've got to help me, Margaret. I, I can hear you, but, but you sound so far away. Tex? Tex? I can't see anything, but I can hear you. I have no sensation. It's as though I'm floating in a void. Where am I? Tex, are you there? Margaret, I need your help. Focus on the sound of my voice. I've got to ask you some questions. Why did you erase my memory? I had to protect my daughter. You knew what happened to her, and I couldn't trust you. Not the man you'd become. What's my connection with Donnelly? Is that me? You are who you want, Tex. When I used the transinducer on you, it restored you to whom you were. Don't go back. Tell me how to get my memory back. I can't do that, Tex. You are the sum of your memories. I took things from you. Repressing your dark memories was my way of atoning for what I did. How do I destroy the immortal coil? Find the frequency. The one I found. The one Tesla found before me. It will destroy itself. There'll be no way they can stop it this time.
doing here? I put a tracking app on your smart, Alex, when you let me download that video of Bowers. Serves me right for trusting a cop. You've been tailing me ever since? No. I wanted to trust you, I really did. But you're a suspect in some unsolved cases, and I thought, possibly and quite likely, you'd go back to your old M.O. at some point. Tex Murphy, you're under arrest. You're arresting me? For what? For the murder of Jim Slade and another as yet unidentified male. I didn't have anything to do the with The bodies the were thrown from Coit Tower, and we have witnesses that saw you leave the scene immediately after. Now that I can explain. I, I understand Slade was a very bad man and probably deserved it. But I told you before, I won't tolerate vigilanteism. Maybe it's not a perfect world, but it's the best I've got. I might have been somebody else over the past seven years, but I'm ready to leave that behind me. I've been given a second chance and I intend to make the most of it. I sense this is just the beginning of something bigger, and what comes next may not be easy. But then again, what is?
Oh no! What's wrong? My speeder! What? It's been stolen! Let's walk. Okay. <laughs> 